Thank you for joining this lesson. Today we're going to handle differentiation. And we're going to look at a 10 mark question here. I first of all request you to subscribe to this channel and to share the link with your friends. Therefore, the question here tells us that the equation of a curve is given by y equals to x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. Then part A, we are told to find the value of y when x equals to 1. So for us to calculate the value of y when x equals to 1, since we got the equation that gives us the relationship between y and x, then we can solve for y given the value of x. So we can say y equals to x cubed and x is equal to 1. So we can say 1 cubed plus 4 into 1 squared minus 3 multiplied by 1. Therefore, when we solve this one, we're going to get the value of y as 2. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. So that is the value of y. We are further told that in part b to determine the stationary points of the curve. It is very important for you to understand that stationary points are also called turning points. So these ones have another name, which is the turning points. The turning points. The turning points are the points whereby the curve changes gradient, either from positive through zero to negative, or from negative through zero to positive, or from positive to positive through zero, or from negative to negative through zero. Those are called turning points or the stationary, the stationary points. So at those points, we usually say that gradient of the curve is zero at turning points. So at turning points, at turning points, gradient is equal to zero. And the gradient function is given by dy dx. So this function will be equal to zero at the turning points. So it is very important to first of all find the gradient function, dy dx of this function. Since the function is x cubed, then differentiating this part, we drop the power, which is 3 here. Then we subtract 2 to the, we subtract 1 to the resulting power. Therefore, we will have 3 x and this one now becomes power 2. Then plus 2 comes here down, so that this one becomes 8 because we're multiplying it with 4. And the power reduces by 1. So it will become now plus 8. And x is now power 1 since it was power 2 before integration. Then minus 3. 3 becomes a constant because x is to power 1. When we drop 1 here, 3 remains 3. But x is now to power 0. And power 0 makes it 1. Therefore, 3 times 1 remains 3. So that is the, the differentiated function. Now we are saying at the turning point, this function will be equal to 0. So we can get the values of x at the turning point where gradient becomes 0. So we can say that 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 equals to 0 at the turning point. For us to get the the values of x we have to get first of all the solution of this equation quadratically and we can use the let me use the product sum method which is called factorization method a sum of 3 by negative 3 which gives us negative 9 a sum of negative 9 and sorry i mean a product of negative 9 and a sum of 8 the value at b so with this we need to get two factors which when multiplied they give us negative 9 and when added they give us 8 and this is 9 and negative 1 so when we now solve this one we shall substitute 8x with 9 and negative 1 such that we will have 3x squared plus 9x minus x minus 3 equals to 0. 
And now in every two terms, we factor out the common factor. So 3x from the first two terms to remain with x plus 3 minus 1 into x plus 3 equals to 0. Therefore, now we can take x plus 3, which is common. Then 3x minus 1 equals to 0. So with this now, we can conclude that each root can be equated to 0 separately. So that we say x plus 3 is equal to 0 or 3x minus 1 equals to 0. Therefore, we can now equate this one to 0 so that x becomes negative 3. Because when we take 3 to the other side, it will become negative. Or x becomes a third. Because we will take 1 to the other side, it becomes positive. And to remain with x, we divide by 3. So this becomes a third equals to x. So now with the two roots of x, we can find the coordinates of the stationary points. Because now we know at the stationary points, these are the respective values of x. This means now we can substitute the values of x independently to get the corresponding values of y. So if we call this one the first x and this one the second x, then we can get the first y, which will be the value of y when x is negative 3. That means we will have to take 3 instead of x now we put negative 3 squared that is cubed sorry plus 4 into negative 3 squared minus 3 into negative 3 so the first value of y is going to be 18 it's going to be 18 then the second value of y is going to be when we substitute now a third such that we we'll start with a third cubed plus 4 into a third squared minus 3 into a third and this will give us this will give us negative 14 out of 27 negative 14 out of 27 so now the coordinates of the stationary points can be given by negative 3 18 and the other stationary point is a third, negative 14, out of 27. So these are the stationary points, or the coordinates of the points, where the gradient function becomes zero. So that is the, the solution of part B. The last part, we're going to find the equation of the normal, of, or to the curve, at x equals to 1. First of all, at x equals to 1, we started by looking at the value of y at that point that we found y is 2. This is according to the first question. When x is 1, y equals to 2. Therefore, at x equals to 1, we have a coordinate which is 1, 2. This means now, because we have a coordinate, then we can now get gradient. What is the gradient when x equals to 1 of this curve? Therefore, gradient of the curve at x equals to 1 because we have gradient function already which is 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 we can have 3 1 squared plus 8 1 minus 3 and this will give us 8 so we have <clears throat> the gradient this gradient is to the curve and also to the tangent but now we need gradient of the normal therefore gradient 2 of the normal will be negative 1 out of 8 such that gradient of the curve and the tangent multiplied to the gradient of the normal should give us negative 1 so gradient to the normal should assume negative the reciprocal of this other gradient so that when multiplied we get a negative 1 to show that tangent and normal are perpendicular so now because we have the gradient and at least a point where it passes, then we can use the gradient, the coordinate, and we assume another coordinate, x, y, 
so that we say that gradient which is negative 1 out of 8 equals to y minus 2 because the coordinate of y is 2 out of x minus the other coordinate here is 1 so now we cross multiply so that 8y minus 16 equals 2 when we cross multiply with negative 1 we get negative x positive 1 such that now 8y equals 2 negative x and this one becomes positive 17 when negative 16 comes to this other side we had it so now to remain with y we got to divide with 8 through such that y is equal to negative 1 out of 8 x plus 17 out of 8 so this is the final equation to the curve